Hi, I'm Ben and this is Ansible, a beginner's tutorial part 1. During this series I'm going to explain how to use Ansible to set up a small web platform. In the video description you'll find links to the other parts as well as a clickable table of contents. As start let me explain what Ansible actually is. Don't worry, it won't take long. Ansible is a configuration management system. That means it can be used to set up and configure computer systems. Its main purpose is in server configuration, but it can be used for desktop configuration also. Ansible itself is maintained by Red Hat. That means commercial support is available if needed. However, the most important parts are free and open source. To let Ansible do its magic, you have to install it on a control machine. That can be your desktop system or a dedicated server. On the target server, however, no configuration is needed. You just need to be able to access them by SSH. Having said that, let's have a look at the environment I'm going to use throughout the series. The platform we are going to set up in this tutorial consists of three machines plus the additional control machine that will host the Ansible tools and configuration. On the right you see the three servers of the platform. The web server will be used as reverse proxy forwarding the user's request to the app server. The app server will host a small Python application that will connect to the database server which in turn will be running a MySQL instance. In a real-world platform, the app and database servers wouldn't be directly reachable. Firewalls here and here would prevent that. But those additional components would make the platform more complicated without adding anything in terms of understanding Ansible. So I decided to leave them out. Let's get started! As Ansible uses SSH as connection method, the first thing to make sure is that you can actually log into the servers via SSH. To make this more convenient, I'm creating an SSH key, so I don't have to type the password every time. I use the command SSH copy ID to copy the key to the servers. Now I check if I can log in to the web server, the app server and the DB server using the new key. As the login is working fine, I can move on to the installation of Ansible. Most modern Linux distributions already provide packages for Ansible. Ubuntu 16.04, which is what runs on my control machine, is no exception. So I could just type up get install Ansible and be done with it. But I do want to install the latest version, so a little bit more work needs to be done. Essentially, I have to add a repository to the system and install Ansible from that repository. To accomplish that, I type apt add repository ppa ansible ansible. I then update the repository cache of the system. And I'm finally able to install Ansible. Finally, I can test if Ansible has been installed correctly. Now that Ansible is running, I can create the basic configuration and folder structure that Ansible requires. The Ansible package does install such a basic configuration at etc Ansible and you could work directly in that directory. But if you want to manage multiple platforms from one control machine, it's better to create a copy of that directory and work on the copy instead. So I just copy etc Ansible to a local directory named My Platform. There are two files in the directory. Ansible.cfg contains options for Ansible and we need to modify one of them. The path to the inventory file. 
Instead of an absolute path, we specify that the host files next to the ansible.cfg file should be used. Now I have to modify the hosts file. The default version only includes comments which I will remove because I still have them at the original location. Instead I write down the names of the servers of my platform. As I can reach them using only their short names, I'm using those. If the platform were to use FQD names or IP addresses, I would write those into the file instead. Now I can run a quick test to see if Ansible can reach the machines. Looks fine. The command I have just used to let Ansible check the connection is called an ad hoc command. Ad hoc commands aren't the usual way to interact with your servers and I will demonstrate the normal style of working in part 2 of the series, but the ad hoc commands do come in handy for small tasks and changes to the platform, like temporarily adding a user or querying information from the servers. Let me demonstrate this. Imagine you want to check the hostname values of every server. Normally you would have to log in to every machine and run the command hostname by yourself. Ansible has a module called shell that lets you execute any command. All you have to type is ansible-m to specify the module, minus a to pass the command and all to identify on which servers you want to run the module on. Ansible will then return a status line for each server along with the output of the command. Let's do another example. This time I want to know the available disk space on the servers. I'm using the same Ansible module, but this time I run df-h. When I tell Ansible to run the whoami command, you can see that Ansible is using my user to execute everything. You'll have to keep this in mind when you want to do something on the server that requires root privileges. In that case, you have to tell Ansible to switch to the root user. You do this by adding minus b to the command. Ansible will then use sudo to become root. By default, it will just assume that your user is allowed to run sudo without specifying any password. This doesn't work on my platform as my user is required to enter his credentials when using sudo. To have Ansible ask for the sudo password, I have to add the minus k switch. For example, if I want to add a user to the servers, I type ansible minus b minus k, then I specify to use the user module and I pass the required parameter, the username. As you can see, Ansible asks me to enter my sudo password before it connects to the servers. Now let's check if the user has been added to the servers. I therefore log into the web server and query the users. Looks good, but hey, I know a better way to do this. Why not use Ansible to check for the users? Ok, the user exists on all three servers. This is the end of part 1 of the series. Let me give you some information while I have Ansible remove the test user from the servers again. In part 2 we will create the first Ansible role and I will explain the concept of playbooks. You will find the link to part 2 in the video description. If you liked this video, please subscribe or give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.